Hi guys, in this video we're going to be learning about changing states. We'll look at specific latent heat. We'll be classifying specific latent heat. We'll be looking at energy calculations, latent heat and heat capacity, temperature time graphs, and finally a summary. Let's start by talking a bit more about changing states. Well, when a substance changes state, the energy and arrangement of its particles changes. For example, when a solid changes to a liquid, we find that the particles become more energetic and they're less strongly bonded to each other and less ordered. So how does this change in arrangement actually happen? Well, particles are held together with things called intermolecular bonds. And when we change the arrangement, intermolecular bonds must be broken or formed. So for example, if all of the particles in a material have intermolecular bonds like this, then this tells them where they all kind of need to sit relative to each other. On the other hand, if we break these intermolecular bonds, then the particles are going to have like more choices about how they can arrange themselves. So changing state is all about making and breaking these intermolecular bonds. And the energy needed to make or break the bonds is related to something we call the specific latent heat. And because this is about the energy for breaking and making bonds, it's also about the energy for changing state. So what is the specific latent heat? Well, we call the energy required to change the state of a substance, the latent heat. And then we define the specific latent heat in the following way. The specific latent heat is the energy required to change the state of one kilogram of a substance without changing its temperature. One interesting thing is that we have this energy change, but we know that we can change between states in both directions. And in one of the directions, energy is going to be released. And in the other direction, energy is going to be taken in. Let's see how this works. Well, when we heat something, it's taking in energy to break the bonds. Well, when we leave ice out in the warm, then it takes in thermal energy from the surroundings. And this thermal energy goes into breaking the intermolecular bonds it has that keep it so rigid. And so then when it absorbs this thermal energy, it becomes water. And the main point here is that the ice took in energy. Well, this all kind of makes sense so far. To change the state, we had to put energy into the system. But what happens if we look at the other way round? Well, when we cool something, it gives out energy and bonds are made. So this is the slightly more surprising case when liquid water freezes to become ice and the intermolecular bonds form, this actually releases energy. So this is quite a strange and surprising concept. When we freeze something, energy is given out. Going back to specific latent heat now, what actually affects the specific latent heat? Well, the type of material certainly affects. For example, it takes a lot less energy to melt ice than it does to melt gold. The specific latent heat also depends on the states of matter that the substance is actually moving in between. For example, it could take more energy to go from solid to liquid than it would to go from liquid to gas. Since we're realising that the specific latent heat or the energy required to change state depends on what the change of state is, it's about time that we gave the different changes of state different names. And we've seen some of the names already. For example, the specific latent heat of fusion relates the change of states between liquids and solids. So it's the specific latent heat of fusion that tells us the energy required for the changes between liquids and solids. And notice that in one direction, fusion corresponds to melting. And in the other direction from liquid to solid, fusion corresponds to freezing. Moving on now to changes between liquids and gases, it's the specific latent heat of vaporization that relates the changes of states between the liquids and gases. So here is our liquid and here is our gas, and we call any change between them vaporization. So vaporization covers going from liquid to gas, which you may know as evaporating or boiling, and also going from gas to liquid, which you might know as condensing. There are two similar sounding terms which have quite different meanings. There is the specific latent heat and there is also the specific heat capacity. 
And we said the specifically latent heat already was all about the energy required to change state. But the specific heat capacity is the energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of substance by one degree centigrade. So the specific heat capacity is all about raising the temperature rather than changing the state. So to reiterate, we understand that heating can cause a change in state or it could cause a change in temperature. And we're interested in the specific heat capacity when we get a change in temperature and we're interested in the specific latent heat when we get a change in state. Now let's talk about temperature time graphs which help us to understand what's happening when a substance is being heated. If we apply constant heating to a substance for long enough, we know that its temperature and its state will change. For example, we know that if we leave ice out, for example, in a bottle in the sun, then to start with, it's going to melt. But we know from experience that after it melts, we're left with cold water. And at that point, we know that the water will then heat up. So for a while, the heat energy from, for example, the sun was going into changing the state of the ice. And then eventually, the energy ended up going into changing the temperature of the water. It turns out that these different sorts of changes will always happen at different times. So for example, there is no change in temperature when there is a changing state. And we can see this effect on a graph. This temperature time graph gives the temperature of a substance as it absorbs heat energy over time. We could imagine, for example, that we started with ice that was very, very cold, and that over time it absorbed heat that caused it to warm up or specifically that caused its temperature to increase. And then we would get to a point where the temperature stopped changing even though heat was still being put into the substance. And we should ask ourselves, where is that energy going if it's not going into raising the temperature? Well, it must be going into changing the state. So we interpret this part of the graph here as the time when the ice was melting. So the idea here is that every flat part of the graph where we see that the substance is receiving or losing heat but the temperature isn't changing must be interpreted as a point where the substance was changing state. It's actually quite interesting to ask ourselves why it is that there's no temperature change when there is a change of state. Well it turns out that when we're changing state we know that all of the energy being put into the system is being used to break bonds. And this means that none of the energy is going into the kinetic energy stores of these particles, which is what we interpret as the thermal energy store of the whole substance. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE physics and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Provide smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.